Saruan dulu nak kalau kau ni radio Fiji One dan Tommy Vicky nak bunga ni binaanu. Ni sambul benak kan? Nangono baru tak ni orang seru nangono ni dia koma lalu. Ni sambul benak kan? Oya wa meli kilangi. Ninge nama kita mana nunggu bengkel ramai. Mai nama ni tiki nawa rombuka. Ena rua kita nawa nak kalau kau nangono ni orang mana dia sana. Waki na wano na ngona ni Rono Sere Ena Radio Fiji One na ndomo ibiti na vunga ni binyanu yanu The FPC 2014 election special You are number one with us Good evening, Fiji. Welcome to our special bulletin of the 2014 general election. Before we begin our coverage of the 2014 general elections, the Water Authority of Fiji has made an important announcement with regards to water rationing. 20,000 people in selected areas of Suva will be subject to water rationing from tomorrow. Water Authority of Fiji Chief Executive Opetai Ravai confirms this is resulting from ongoing drought. What this on Irakandroka reports. The drought is affecting the Water Authority's ability to supply 4,000 homes in Suva because levels in catchment areas have dropped by more than 30%. The reason for uh, water supply disruptions is primarily due to um, the prolonged dry spell that we uh, are currently facing and that has started uh, way, way back in May. So this drought has um, you know, affected the levels at our intakes at our water sources and uh, subsequently this is this is affecting all parts of Fiji and also uh, I'd like to inform you the Pacific is also uh, experienced the same things we are experiencing in Fiji the prolonged dry spell. From tomorrow water will be supplied on alternate days in Tamoboiwai, Apandelenovesi, Nandonumai, Lami village, Subobu village and Wungalei. From Sunday areas affected include Kalekana settlement Wailekotu, Undue Point, Namukai Lau, Mbilo, Old Queens Roads, Wainganake, Beninai Valley, Wainingasau, Monfort Boys Town, Tongalewu Naval Base, Apalami and Gawia Settlement. Some residents in Samumbula have already been living with intermittent supply. It's been a week since uh, we facing a uh, lack uh, cut down of water. Uh, mostly uh, students not going to school and uh, really frustrating to us. Uh, the water truck has not been coming. Opeta Yarawai adds they have distributed around 8 million litres of water through water trucks and budgets that supply outer islands. He added that the public should be aware of water restrictions. And we could, we could also come to a situation whereby there will be uh, water restrictions, but you know, we'll inform the customers well beforehand. Uh, this type of water restrictions has not happened uh, since 1999. I believe that was the last time that the government had to uh, put in place water restrictions like uh, restricting uh, washing of cars, restricting uh, washing driveways and watering gardens. But we're not there yet, or filling your pools, eh? uh, cleaning out your pools and filling your pools. We're not restricting those activities yet, but we, we do plead with our customers to please, uh, at this time, you know, we don't want to get to a situation where we have to enforce that, but you still can do, um, you know, uh, use water wisely or, you know, the smart ways to uh, do things. And if you can help us in that regard, then we can, can conserve uh, more water so that we can uh, spread the supply to more customers and we prolong the negative impact of the drought that we are facing. The Water Authority of Fiji is advising us, the public, to store water now. What's Tony Rekanroka for FBC News. The Fijian Elections Office is announcing the official results of the 2014 elections from the main tallying centre. The announcements began from 2 p.m. today and is now running non-stop until all the confirmed results have been read out. Christopher Chand is standing by at the tally centre. Chris, what's the latest? I'm at the National Tally Centre here at the FMF Gymnasium where the Elections Office has started announcing official results for the 2014 general elections. Now these are not the provisional results, these are the official results. So far a total of 74 polling stations have been tallied with a total of 18,849 votes. A total of 145 of these 18,849 from that 
145 are invalid votes. Now looking at the candidate list, Fiji First Party leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama, as, pre, as shown in the provisional results, has taken the lead with 7,000 votes after 74 after the, the telling of 74 polling stations, Vorenge Mbaini Marama is leading the race with 7,000 votes. Sodelpa leader Rote Momo Kepa is in second place with a total of 2,508 votes. Following them is the Fiji First General Secretary Aya Sayed Keyum with a total of 364 votes. The National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad is with a total of 288 votes. Now these are the official results that have been announced by the elections office from 2 p.m. this afternoon and these are the top four performing candidates. Now just, just from what we've analyzed, Fiji First Party leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama has performed exceptionally, exceptionally well in some of the remote uh, polling stations and he has received uh, the highest uh, number of votes from these polling stations. Uh, we have the Supervisor of Elections, Mohammed Sanim, with us this evening to explain to us the process that's taking place now as they are confirming the official results. Uh, Mr. Sanim, can you tell us what's happening now at the National Tele Center? Thank you. Uh, we have, uh, after 17th of September on the night, we put up provisional results from polling stations that had called in. Thereafter, we began, on the same night, we started counting and have been continuously counting until, uh, and we're still counting the results uh, for pre poll and postal. But uh, what we are doing now is that we have also received the original protocols from all the polling stations and we are now entering the protocols into our system and we are re also releasing st results straight after uh, as we go. Um, just to tell you something, it's not only uh, 74 polling stations results that we have received. I can assure everybody that we've received uh, all the results, but uh, we are announcing it as we go and that takes a little bit of time. And uh, we will continue announcing this overnight and if it needs to be, it will continue to be announced till tomorrow. So uh, these are the final results. If you are keeping your own tally, please do not add these to the provisionals because it could be a possibility that this is a confirmation of the provisional result already received. My view is to put the provisionals aside and now deal with the final itself. When can Fiji expect the final results? We're trying our best, We're trying to, uh, to make sure we meet the deadline that we have set. You, you tell us that you've increased the number of counting officers here yes. so that you can fast track the process of counting? Yes. Uh, we have uh, dramatically increased the number of uh, staff at the counting center. From 20 teams, we've got up to 70 teams. Uh, we, want, uh, we understand Fijians want results and uh, the elections office will respond accordingly. So uh, just a brief look again at the total number of polling stations. These are the official confirmed results, a total of 74 polling stations. The results have been announced this afternoon. And Fiji First Party leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama has set the pace with a total of 7,000 votes. Sodelpa leader Rote Momo Kepa in second place with a total of 2,508 votes. Now that's the latest announcements that have been made. Uh, we'll keep you updated with the results as they come to hand. Thanks so much for that update, Christopher. The Electoral Commission and the Supervisor of Elections held their first joint briefing today as official results started to come out of the main tallying centre. Electoral Commission Chairman Chen Ban Yang responded to claims by political parties that there has been electoral fraud. When those evidence come, we have to evaluate the evidence, and if we think there is some basis for it, we will refer it and we will talk to the uh, Supervisor of Election about it, and then he will have to review uh, the procedures and look at the evidence. Now, the next point is this, the, the public should also know, just because there may have been a breach, just say for example, there's this file that suddenly slipped into this particular uh, ballot box, if that was the case. Now, how does it affect the overall results? The Commission Chairman added that any allegations of fraud or rigging of the elections must first be dealt with by the Commission. We investigate it. Because we are the Electoral Commission, we are in the business of delivering to the country a fair and credible election. If we can't pass it on to a third body. Now, if there has been fraud, obviously criminal charges uh, uh, is, is the next uh, stage. And that's where the police will come in or the authorities who are in charge uh, uh, will come in to determine whether a criminal offence has been committed. So it has to come through the supervisory election and the electoral commission. There can be no bypassing of us because we are in charge of the elections. Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim has also stressed that there has been no stop or suspension of the counting of votes. So at 6 a.m. when we 
finished putting up all the provisionals. There was one last update at 1 p.m. of the ones that filtered in afterwards. But it has not meant that the counting stopped. Counting still going on, still was going on yesterday. Sunni maintains all final results are likely to be in by Sunday. Political parties are refusing to accept the result of the elections, saying the votes have been rigged two days after polling ended. However, on counting night, hours after voting had ended, representatives of these same parties commended the electoral process. Ritika Pratap reports. Once it became clear that Fiji First had the majority, the Social Democratic Liberal Party, the Fiji Labour Party, the People's Democratic Party, One Fiji and the National Federation Party banded together. They have discredited the results from the Fijian Elections Office and the electoral process saying there was coordinated and systematic fraud. Well, we don't consider this election to be free and fair. I don't think it meets the international benchmark for free and fair elections. We have always said that we will accept free and fair elections. And I think I've already told you that, and uh, we will accept it if it's free and fair. But some of these irregularities that have been um, three, and others that we have, will bring that to their attention. Yeah, can you help us to, uh, you know, to convey these issues to the public because the public has the right to know, and uh, we here are in solidarity because, like has been mentioned, we met just this morning and shared these issues. Uh, this was not pre-planned, and we have come here cleanly to seek a fair audience and a free media, hopefully, that will help us to uh, inform the public and also get the supervisor elections and the uh, electoral commission to do the right thing. Earlier today, the parties were supposedly gathering evidence to submit to the elections office. Interestingly, though, FBC News spoke to representatives of these same political parties on election night when the votes were being counted and party agents were present at all polling centers. Different views were coming out from the Social Democratic Liberal Party and the People's Democratic Party. This year has been uh, very encouraging. Uh, things have gone very smoothly, despite all the fears from, you know, from the onset uh, before the today. Uh, there were so many queries over whether people would get through the, the day itself and uh, how they would uh, you know, acclimatize to a new system of voting, eh, particularly with numbers. But that went through very well, and now with counting, in some uh, areas, counting has already, uh, com has already been completed. And uh, in that respect, we, we recognize the huge effort put in by the uh, supervisor of elections and his team. And uh, on behalf of the party, we'd like to uh, commend them and thank them sincerely. Is the People's uh, Democratic Party satisfied with how the polls were conducted? Generally we are. Generally we are. Uh, we had um, an issue in the West where one of our agents was told to leave. Um, there was a bit of a dispute, but that needs to be looked at, you know, and we've gone through the right channel to address the, the complaint with the elections office. So we'll leave it at that. But otherwise, generally, it's been quite smooth. And I think people have also found that the, the process has been easy enough to understand and for people to cast their vote so yeah the change happened after provisional results showed that fiji first had secured 60 percent of the provisional votes and was likely to form government no evidence of said irregularities have been made public as yet Ritika pratap fpc news now, the political parties have held a media conference in the last hour in relation to their concerns. Maggie Boyle is at the briefing and joins us live. Maggie, what's the latest? Hi, Jackie. I'm here at Studio 6, and as you can see behind me, there are journalists from overseas and there are local journalists have been waiting here about an hour now and there seems to be some confusion over a press conference that was initially scheduled for around five o'clock this afternoon. Now this press conference was going to be by the five political parties that yesterday had alleged electoral fraud. Now as you know this afternoon there was a press conference with the Electoral Commission and the Supervisor of Elections and the Electoral Commission chairman had said that he was, he was told by the parties that um, lodged the allegations yesterday afternoon that they were going to present 
present him with evidence by the end of today uh, with regards to that allegation. Now, as you also know, the chairman went on to say that he couldn't very well stop the count or the verification process on a whim. He needed evidence to then proceed by evaluating that evidence and then moving forth whether they needed to, whether he needed to conduct, uh, speak to the supervisor of elections and then take it further. Um, we're still here. We're still waiting. There's been no word from any of the parties about this um, a press conference and when it will possibly be. So until then, Jackie, we'll try to keep you updated. We'll look out for that. Thanks so much for that, Maggie. We'll take a short break and return with more coverage of the 2014 election. Stay with us. All the polling venues will be polling. And our focus is to win the election. Win them to just the right uh, candidate. Especially this time when there's an election. The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. छू 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 है है नमस्ते फिर जी आपके हर एक प्रॉब्लम की दवा लेकर मैं आ गई हूँ नौ से बारह बजे तक आपकी सहेली रेनू छू 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 फोर्टी में ट्वेंटी का दिखना है मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर नौ से बारह बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट The FPC 2014 election special. You are number one with us. Welcome back to our special bulletin of the 2014 general election. Labour Party candidate Dr. Rohit Kishore says the once popular People's Party has been destroyed by the party leader Mahendra Chaudhry and his son Rajendra. Dr. Kishore says Mahendra Chaudhry's style of leadership has failed to keep up with modern politics, ensuring the decimation of the Fiji Labour Party. A disgruntled and disappoint disappointed, Dr. Kishore spoke to Ritika Pratap about this and other issues this afternoon. The issue is the leadership. The leadership and say it's very clear that uh, he's a convicted person and still leading the party. How can we trust your party? So that was one thing. And the other thing just coming out uh, quite clearly, quite strongly in the Indian community particularly, was the, our announcement uh, coalition with Sodalpha party. They didn't have anything in, in Sodalpha party per se, but their policies. In, in particular, the policy of bringing back the Golingoli, they're very scared. Indian people are particularly scared of the word Golingoli. And they were also not happy about the non-secular state. They're talking about, you know, becoming a Christian state. So these are some of the things which came out very, very clearly. That, and this is my assessment that that's why they have not uh, voted. I heard what I heard from my campaigners. I think if I was the, given the leadership, at least we would have made two to three seats in, in the parliament. No doubt about that. And what are we going to do with the FLP? Fiji Labour Party, is it finished or is it got any, any legs left, any, 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 you know, anything left in it to, to take it to the next election? So that's another thing. Now, leadership now, if I want to become a leader, if that's the question, I would say leadership of what? I mean, seriously, I don't see much left in Labour Party. Uh, both of them, you know, Mr. Chaudhry and his son, I think they, they colluded. And, and they really, it, one, you know, one side, I... I tend to tend to think that they, once he didn't get to contest, he wanted none of us to qualify, and uh, FLP get no seat in the parliament. So that uh, because you can imagine that they, he wants to keep that party, this party, so much he doesn't want to give it to anybody, and uh, that his assessment would have been that oh, if somebody comes, I come or anybody else take the party to the to the parliament because he can't go, then that person will have uh, authority power. And, and will be the leader. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, this is my, my assessment that they, they colluded together to make sure that uh, we didn't qualify and we didn't meet the threshold. And I think they've been successful. The People's Democratic Party insists the elections were rigged. This despite the polls and counting process being given a free and fair bill of health, not only by the Electoral Commission and the Elections Office, but also the International Observer Group. Party General Secretary Aman Ravindra Singh has called on the supervisor of elections to take action, but has declined to provide evidence to back his claims. Akusita Thatley reports. Our stand remains the same, and uh, we have ask the supervisor of elections to act uh, accordingly and we are now waiting for the supervisor of elections to make a comeback and inform us.
The People's Democratic Party have lodged four complaints, two on Elections Day and two more from yesterday. The one in Tavua and uh, Ba had to do with uh, polling, polling agents uh, being asked to leave the polling station. And the one uh, which was, uh, or the two, which uh, related to complaints from Lotoka City, or the outskirts of Lotoka City, had to do with um, had to do with the count. So, as as mentioned, that that is still being dealt with the supervisor's office, and uh, we are hoping that uh, we would get a quick response as opposed to a response dragging. The party had also raised their disappointment with the counting process, claiming they have not been informed about results from the tele center. We as a political party are not being informed. The last information we had was uh, about 5 a.m. on the morning of 18th from um, the press uh, team in the Supervisor of Elections Office. Since then, we have not received a single statement or any information with regards to where the count is at that leaves us in the dark. The party admits its rigging claims are based on second-hand information. Today's claims come despite President Linda Tambuya giving the electoral process a big tick Wednesday night at the National Tele Center. However, yesterday, political parties including PDP asked the Supervisor of Elections and the Electoral Commission to suspend counting based on their claims that the ballots were rigged. No evidence has been provided to the media or the Electoral Commission and the Elections Office to substantiate the claims. Both officers and the International Observer Group are satisfied that the process was free and fair with no evidence of any rigging. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The Media Development Authority says it is considering revoking accreditation of a number of international journalists currently in Fiji to cover the elections. Chairman Ashwin Raj says some of the reports emanating from foreign journalists is concerning. If you look at Radio New Zealand, for instance, I'm absolutely shocked at how one-sided the stories are. Al Jazeera, for instance, you know, has done a report uh, which talks about the 2000 and coup, which was uh, instigated by a whole bunch of indigenous people against what they call a minority-rich Indo-Fijian community. Now, isn't that racial stereotyping? Raj also says people need to be critical of what they read on social media. I want to appeal to members of the public to be absolutely careful in terms of the kinds of stuff they post on Facebook, uh, you know, uh, and, and really reckless statements uh, that allege, uh, you know, uh, any kind of uh, fraudulent uh, practice in, in this election is, is deeply problematic. They need to seek proper legal recourse, file an affidavit, uh, and, and exhaust the processes that are available to them in the electoral decree, but to not simply take it to the social media and for our international journalists and the politicians to take what's in the social media as fact. We 41 foreign journalists have been accredited to cover the 2014 elections. Independent candidate Rashika Deo says while she had a lot of support initially, many people didn't vote for her. We have a lot of supporters. Um, a lot of our supporters have been in touch with us and uh, it's, uh, it's been really interesting. Um, I don't know if this is common uh, during all the elections or if this is common among our, all the other candidates, but uh, I have had uh, at least more than uh, six people call me and a few met me along, uh, on the streets or around who've um, said to me that um, they support me immensely and they wish they could have voted for me, but they didn't vote for me because um, they were um, scared and they felt that uh, uh, you know, it was more important that Sudelpa didn't come into power and that Beni Marama did. Dear believes there are many issues that need to be addressed. Issues that was not discussed uh, substantively by any political parties that we addressed. So things like street harassment, disability rights, um, uh, things to do with mental health awareness, um, uh, social welfare and height affected women, um, the economic impact on women. So there was many in the LGBTIQ group. So there was uh, many issues that was not uh, on the national agenda that we managed to bring into the national agenda. She is looking forward to the next elections. Uh, apart from that, uh, we managed to raise a lot of issues and the work has not finished quite. Deo received 851 votes in the provisional results that were released yesterday by the Elections Office. The Fiji United Freedom Party has no objections to the electoral process because it had no polling agents to observe counting. 
The party only had three candidates in the election and so far has only 686 provisional votes. Karuna Ratne says the party is disappointed, yet humble by the support it has received. FUFP will continue its activities and prepare for the next election. Now to other news. Fijian soldiers serving under the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force in Golan Heights are slowly being deployed to Israel. The Fiji military forces has confirmed this decision has been made by the United Nations due to attacks by the Syrian rebels. Savarat Tamboa has the story. RFMF Chief of Staff Lieutenant Colonel Siti Beningilio says the situation has deteriorated significantly in the area of separation between Syria and Israel, where UN forces are positioned. There is a major decision that was made, uh, especially with the two uh, the states agreeing to the UN being there in the first place. But obviously, with the uh, events that have unfolded there recently, it become untenable for the, uh, the UNDOF to operate in that area, hence their redeployment to the Israeli side. Lieutenant Colonel Ngilio says when the entire Fiji contingent was moved out of the hostile zone, the 45 troops who were held captive by Al-Nujra were violated in a hotel in Israel, while the remaining troops are at Camp Suwani. They had been all moved across into Israel from the Syrian side of the, of the tactical fence. And uh, that uh, is an ongoing situation. It's only the 19th now. Uh, but the 45, uh, 45 soldiers that were held hostage, the two officers are, are at work in Camp Zuwani on the Israeli side, while the rest, uh, the 43, uh, were the first to be moved into a hotel in Tiberi. Meanwhile, Ngilio has confirmed the 45 soldiers will complete their mission. The RFMF hasn't received any results yet from the assessment carried out on the soldiers who were in captivity for two weeks. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. That's it for now from us. Stay with us, though, as we update you with live results throughout the night. Bye for now. Old poly venues and recalling that our focus is to win the election. Remind them to just the right uh, candidate. Especially this time when there's an election. The FBC 2014 election special. You are number one with us.